We had always talked about how uh, Uncharted 4 was going to be the uh, last uh, Nathan Drake story, and we were very, you know, cagey about not saying this is the last Uncharted because uh, clearly we had promised everybody some DLC at some point, and we had real no idea of uh, what form that was going to take. But you know, we wanted to like uh, keep our options open, and I mean, it was, you know. On the table at one point, like if we decided that we couldn't come up with anything that would be worthy of the franchise and worthy of the stories that we tell, we probably would have done something and just like found a way to refund people's like that section of the money or whatever. But ultimately, we just found that there was more stories that we wanted to tell inside the uh, Uncharted universe. Really, what it came down to is like we needed to come up with something that everybody was excited about. We explored story possibilities with almost every character in the franchise, except for maybe Jeff the cameraman from Uncharted 2. I'm sorry, Jeff. What it just kept on coming back to was, you know, Chloe's a fan favorite character. We weren't able to feature her in Uncharted 4. She didn't, there was really not a place in the story for her. Here's a character with some very interesting uh, character traits, uh, a potentially interesting backstory, and a uh, dynamic that is similar to Nathan Drake's. But uh, you know her uh, moral compass is a little bit uh, less uh, directed, shall we say. What if we approach the story from the point of view of someone who is, uh, on the surface, uh, just seems to be after the treasure? But then we sort of like peel back the layers of the onion a little bit and start thinking like, okay, why is she after this particular treasure? And what is it about uh, returning to uh, India and her Indian heritage that uh, makes this one maybe a little bit different than uh, some of the others that she's uh, gone after in the past. And why would she team up with somebody like Nadine, who she knows to be dangerous, and everybody in this world knows everybody else, so you know, surely she knows what uh, went down. So just sort of getting an opportunity to explore some of those avenues with her just sounded really cool. So I mean, you were there back in the day on Uncharted 2. Are there any elements of Chloe's character that we're always in the official lore bible you guys have for Uncharted, but haven't really been able to express until this game. Uh, I would like to see this official lore bible. I haven't seen, I, nothing's written down. <laughs> nothing's written down. When we develop our characters, we develop them only so far as we need to, because you don't want to necessarily like uh, fill out too much detail about the character. You want the audience, you want the players to sort of like uh, fill in some of their uh, backstories themselves. But now, because she's front and center in this game, now we're having a chance to talk more in depth about it. Like, okay, how did she become the way she is? And how does that possibly evolve while looking after this particular treasure? One of the most fun aspects of Uncharted and writing for Uncharted is uh, doing all this uh, research. You know, with The Lost Legacy, due to the uh, reduced uh, scope of the game. It's uh, less about following a, a very specific uh, historical figure like Henry Avery or like uh, Marco Polo or something like that, like that, and more about the region itself, the uh, religion and the sim symbology behind the religion and the general uh, philosophy behind the religion and how this uh, pertains to uh, the characters in the game. So it's a little bit less of a deep dive. You know, we don't necessarily have as much time to lay out this uh, crazy history like we did with Henry Avery. So instead, you know, it's just sort of like looking at the culture and how that culture has shaped the region and how the culture reflects and the philosophy of that culture reflects the uh, different characters in the game. We start with a big empty cork board and then uh, all the uh, individual uh, story beats, uh, we just start sticking them up just as like a good visual representation of uh, where you're going. We do things like, well, color code them, like, you know, this is a story beat, this is a set piece, here is a big turning point and all that kind of stuff just so we can uh, keep track of everything. And as new ideas come up, um, we take some things down and rearrange them and things like that. I mean. God, the, the stack of rejected cards from the process of making the story is probably, I don't even know, like taller than this room. So Lost Legacy got off to kind of a slow start because it took us a long time to sort of like find our thread and to start to follow it. But once we had it, everything started falling into place really, really fast. But one thing that uh, came together faster than I can ever remember was having a game that was actually playable from start to finish. And granted, a lot of that game was incredibly rough or partially broken or just like, you know, there was barely anything except a bunch of uh, cubes and things to uh, climb on. But it was playable from start to finish. And I think, you know, everybody uh, took a lot of the lessons that we learned in uh, making an Uncharted 4 and really all of our previous games and just tried to apply them to do it as like efficiently and as uh, unpainfully, is that a word? Unpainfully as uh, possible. 
So you guys are a well-oiled machine at this point. Uh, yeah, I would I wouldn't know about well-oiled machine, but we're definitely we're definitely a machine. <laughs> Every single project we learn from our previous mistakes and we make brand new ones. And uh, I think because we're uh, rolling into this uh, right after uh, finishing uh, Uncharted 4, is we really know how to make an Uncharted game, what a lot of the pitfalls are going to be, and uh, a lot of uh, the planning that we put into the project has sort of like been trying to. Uh, counter that as much as possible. And inevitably there's going to be some surprises we're going to, you know, we'll make a sequence and realize that, you know, maybe doesn't it's not as effective as we want it or we realize that we have to like adjust the level to uh, accommodate uh, the story a little bit more or we need to adjust the level to accommodate the game a little bit more. But all these things are minor versus like just having like big sweeping changes. And the nice thing about having the game playable from start to finish early is that we're able to identify those things much sooner. Whereas, you know, Uncharted 4, you know, we also put that one together given the size of the game fairly quickly. But even then the game was so big and sprawling and beyond a scale of anything that we had ever attempted before that like sometimes identifying some of the things that needed to be cut was difficult. And that's why we ended up doing things, realizing that, oh, we're not gonna have time to include the sword fight between young Nate and young Sam. We're gonna have to cut that. You know, hindsight being 2020, obviously, like, you know, if we had like caught that stuff earlier, we maybe could have made some smaller cuts sooner rather than bigger cuts later. So one of the things we've been trying to do on Lost Legacy is to avoid that as much as possible. And so far we've been, I think, doing a pretty good job. Every new project is a new challenge. And every now and then, particularly when I'm writing Lost Legacy, if I'm needing a little uh, kick in the pants uh, motivation-wise, I'll go back and I'll rewatch part of an Uncharted 4, or particularly I'll rewatch part of an Uncharted 4 that's being played by a YouTube streamer, just to sort of like get the reactions. It's always hard. I think any creative professional has days where they feel like they're just not uh, hitting the mark and uh, you know you just sort of have to power through it and uh, keep on going and eventually you get back to that. There's an illustrator and comic artist named uh, Kazu Kibuishi he does a series called uh, Amulet. He also did all the recent uh, covers for the new editions of uh, Harry Potter and he once wrote this uh, thing that said like you know here's the creative process which is you know this is going to be great. This is really hard. This is terrible. I'm terrible. <laughs> wait a minute, this is going to be great. <laughs> it just, it's just this constant thing that keeps on going and going, and that's, you just sort of accept that that's part of it. And where are you at right now in that clock for Lost Legacy? Uh, right now I'm feeling this is going to be great. If you asked me last week, it might have a different answer. But, it, but you, just keep, you just keep on going. 